Hello everybody and welcome to a new Banter Blitz show with none other than the world champion Mr. Magnus Carlsen. Magnus, your picture is frozen, but other than that, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing, I think I would be doing about the same if my picture wasn't frozen, but um, yeah, I'm better than ever. That's great to hear. This is a banter blitz show, so you guys know the rules. You track down Magnus on Chess24. The username is MagzBox, almost like the famous, famous tiny basketball player. And you challenge him to a blitz game. You can choose if you want to be three minutes or five minutes. That is all there is. We see Mr. Carlson again. Before the games begin, Magnus, current events in chess. The US Championships are starting tonight, I believe. Are you excited? Who's your favorite? I'm definitely, uh, definitely excited about it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, um, it's been a long time since, uh, um, since we've had uh, uh, such a good event uh, on, on the calendar. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited. And uh, as for favorites, it's uh, hard to go against. Uh, the reigning champion Sam Shankland, as as um, uh, as they said at the start of the NBA season, uh, Tristan Thompson uh, reiterated that he thought uh, the Cavs were still the team to beat in the East, as they were the defending champions. And I think the same goes for uh, the US Championship. <laughs> That's an excellent point. You don't get a draft pick for tanking the US Championships though, but uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. Alright, let's start the games. I think we can get the games rolling for sure. You have some challenges over there? Yeah, I do have some challenges, so... Uh, uh, well, I mean, speaking of the uh, basketball theme, then I'm going to try one game against Warriors 2019 champs. Wow, best of luck. I'm out of here. I'll be back for the outro. Have fun, Magnus. Bye. Bye. Okay, let's start with uh, 1c4, my new favorite move. e5. Gonna try and play a knight or in reverse. Not to be confused with any other things in reverse. Um, maybe I could have gone d4 there. Even with the loss of tempo, since 1e4, c5, uh, g3, d5 is considered a good line for black. Um, anyway, now we get a standard uh, close this again in reverse. So, although I'm not exactly sure. If his knight on, on f6 is perfectly placed. Um, never seen that move before. Seems a tad over ambitious to me. Maybe he just uh, mouse lift. That's a shame if he did. Bishop g4 is usually not a good move in these lines because I want to play h3 to secure the bishop on e3 later anyway, so... Um, it's just losing a tempo. And I don't think c5 is helping his, his cause very much. I guess the exchange in e2 was as good as, as any move, but now I'm a very healthy pawn up and, and um, should, should be doing, doing very well. He should, should go knight e8 to d6 now, play for a uh, full blockade and, and hope for the best. But, um, yeah, it's hopes for him. Um, Getting any, anything from this game are obviously slim. 
If not h5, we can just go king h2. And you know, if he had a better grip in the center, then he might have had some some tricks there. But I don't think he does with uh, with my Meister pawn in there. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I think d5 was was certainly uh, certainly a mouse slip. So, but we cannot sit here on a serious chess show and give take backs. Unfortunately. Um, now I'm calculating a line starting with knight b5, a6, d5, rook e6, f5, rook f6, seeing whether I have something there. Because He's a little bit late with the plan with knight d6, but it still it still is a good one. So I'm just going to keep it simple and close the position. So I didn't, since I didn't, um, I didn't find the way over there. But now he's going to survive for a while, clearly. Now I'm looking at lines like GF. Um, and uh, if EF, then knight of six, I think E4 wasn't really too, um, too dangerous. Um, yeah, this was a little dumb. Now I thought I was threatening, threatening F6, but he can go bishop F6. Bishop d7, rook d7, and I'm not actually winning any material. So I guess I should go for a different one. Trying to force f6, at least then I get bishop bishop to e6 after. Uh, oh, that was actually quite clever. I cannot play bishop e7, d. Yeah, I just lose a piece. So. Now after f6, my. Uh, my. Uh, oops. Unfortunately, that just hangs a piece. Yeah, now after f6, my queen wasn't going to to g4, h5, so it would have been a little less dangerous for him. Uh, but, but yeah, the move that he did make was unfortunately a, a blunder of a piece. And uh, from now on, the game shouldn't be. Uh, too too exciting. Yeah, let's try and simplify the position. I'm getting told that my my video keeps keeps freezing, which I have no idea why. Have a new computer. And um, I'm a bit of a Neanderthal when it comes to all this tech stuff, but it shouldn't be that difficult. And I do somehow have the feeling that this is not entirely my fault. Maybe incorrect though. Yeah. I don't even want to allow Queen F2, so. Queen b6. He's trying his best, but it's not gonna. It's not gonna lead him anywhere. Okay, I'm just. I don't know. I don't want to think. Just keep it simple.
Yeah, queen comes to d4, now I'm thinking rook d1 and push the pawn. Unless he goes queen a4, then I go b3 first and then push the pawn. Now this pawn is queening. That's, that's the rook. Okay, good effort, sir. Let's... Uh, Let's try the next one. Uh, we got, let's try it, double angriff. Keep getting white, I have no idea why that is. E4, best by test. C6, okay, I'm gonna try an old Coffee house favorite of mine. I once beat Tomaszewski with this at the last round of the world. Blitz 2015. It should be noted that I was in major tilt at that point and um, and it, the win had nothing to do with the opening. So, And it should also be noted that, I, that I've lost, I've lost a um, Blitz game to uh, Laurent Fessinet in this line, which is not something I ever wanted to have on my resume. Should I go f4 or not f3? Nah, I'll go not f3. Um, the way that he's played it, my, my system kind of makes some sense. It feels like I'm getting a kind of decent French since the bishop is going to, um, to c2 very soon to uh, occupy its kind of lawful place and um, and um, yeah it's um, it's not too bad so clearly um, on um, on move three um, with black you should take the pawn there's there is no doubt about that and then White's compensation is, objectively speaking, nebulous at, at best. Maybe he wants knight b4, but I don't think he actually wins any time here. Because, well, I'm moving my pieces back and forth, but I kind of want to play a3 anyways. And, and c3 is the best square for, um, for my knight. Should be noted that on the previous move, had he gone g5, which is a typical move in these lines, I probably would have gone bishop e3. And uh, with the knight on, on d2, um, this I don't have this move, bishop, um, bishop e3. Uh, so I think when the knight is on b1, that move isn't particularly successful because he cannot uh, immediately... Uh, break my center. So he's playing. He's playing decently, obviously, but um, I think um, I'm getting a a very easy game here, and uh, he's soon gonna have to to watch out for some kingside attacks. All of his pieces are on on decent squares, but it's hard for him to um, uh, to organize an um, you know um, an attack or it's hard to see what points he's going to attack and now. G3, the plan is very simple. I'm just going to go H4 and um, put something on, on G5 and, and checkmate him. That's, um, that's the very simple plan. And uh, um, often it's, it's, it's hard to, uh, to do something um, to do something with, he may have to go for f6 or f5 at some point, but then, um, then uh, I've clearly um, achieved something serious. It's very tempting to go knight g5 anyways here, um, takes queen h5 and so on, but um, I'm just going to go knight h2 instead, intending obviously queen h5. 
then 94 and or bishop h6 it's going to be very hard for him to defend yeah king h8 doesn't help it's all about it's all about the space advantage which makes it so hard for him to uh, to transfer his forces from uh, from one side to the other so this is actually what i kind of hoped that he wouldn't do um since now i may have to to take on h6 which i believe he should not take because uh, then after takes e6 will will hang and i will win way too many many pawns unless there's uh there's there's a mate but he's going to go queen e8 and uh, survive to an ending which, which is a little which is a little dull on the other hand after ef knight of six queen g6 he can at the very least play queen e8 and survive to to an ending anyway so whatever just gonna cash in the pawn and and be happy. And um, so queen eight happened. That was correct. Now I have to decide where to put the to put the bishop. I probably should go all the way back to to c1 the reason is that after knight c4 i want to protect b2 and probably go bishop to d3 and if i'd gone let's say bishop bishop f4 uh then after after um knight c4 bishop d3 you could have taken on b2 bishop a6 and then um so now he allowed me to play bishop a4, which I, which is a chance I think I should take. Trying to uh, to annoy him a bit. I kind of want to to transfer the knight from e2 to f4. Just wondering if I should allow should allow him to play b5 so easily. Maybe I should go knight b5. Yeah, I like knight b5. If he does take it, it feels like I'm getting some kind of grip on the light squares, and otherwise that knight on b5 is really annoying. And after this one, I think I can just take on a7. Yeah, knight b5, and if rook c4, I can just go knight c3, and uh, that's a very nice pawn. Knight b3, I just go, I go, um, yeah, I was thinking rook b1, obviously. Now I'm thinking about bishop g5 as well. Bishop g5, knight g5, knight a1, knight a6, but now I, s that may work, but now I see after bishop g5, bishop g5, knight g5, knight d4 is possible, so. Just gonna go, go with a simple option. Rook b1, two pawns up, and um, not a worry in this world. Now he has to, he has to take on c1, and in addition to being two pawns down, he also has. By far the worst pieces. Bishop b5 just killing his knight completely. And he... I think this is a case of absolute Sugsvang. King f7 loses to knight g5 and that was the only only legal move that didn't hang anything. So that was a, was a fun finish at the very least. Okay... Let's see what challenges we have. Uh, let's
but I may accept a uh, three-minute game now. Or uh, let me see if I have any three-minute challenges. Okay, there we go. Templarity from Croatia. Okay, what opening do I want to play? Let's try the modern. And with a little twist. I, I lost to Mickey Adams with this line at the, um, at the Olympiad in 2010. But it wasn't necessarily be because of the opening. Uh, naturally, after knight f6, you should go. You should go e5. That's the way to to punish. But d5. Uh, sorry, knight c3 isn't bad either. Um, but after d5, e5 is the is the way to try. Clearly, what he does is a little bit um, it's a little bit tame. And um, now I've already um, solved my my opening problems. He's got a solid position, obviously. Um, but I'm, I'm fairly comfortable. I assume you should take on c5. I go queen c5, then castles. Oh, bishop b3. Maybe bishop b3 is not bad. But it feels a bit feels a bit strange leaving B two hanging. Now after C four, I will I will just go. I think Queen D six. And uh, if D C, I'm pretty happy to 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 play an ending with um, with a superior pawn structure. And uh, otherwise, if he goes c3, he can go c3. It just... I don't know. It seems to stink a bit. But maybe maybe he's, he's quite all right. Bishop d4. Yeah, my hopes were on queen a5 here. Seeing that he probably cannot play something like... Uh, Queen c2 because of bishop d4. And if he castles, I can go e5. And as far as I can see, I I win some material. It should be noted that after b4 now, I need to go queen a3. Um, since uh, if b4, queen c7, he has knight e5, bishop e5, bishop e5, saving the piece. So what he should try is, yeah, again, b4. Now what he should try is, is definitely, uh, he should just go for it with um, with uh, knight, knight g5 or bishop c4. And, um, and play for mate. That's, that's his only hope. The one thing he shouldn't do is think, because when we're playing three minutes, you don't. You simply don't have that time. You have to play faster, sir. Because um, yeah, this this doesn't doesn't really work. Uh, I can just take on c3 because b4 is hanging, so rook c1 won't trap the queen, and otherwise I have d3. Thanks for the game. Um, but yeah, you gotta you gotta play more ambitiously in the opening. You gotta punish. You gotta punish those uh, those dubious lines. Okay, let's see who do we have here. Uh, okay, let's try. 
tag på rated above 2700 should be a nice challenge and I get a black game again which is nice getting as I said I was getting too many white games Knight f3 mm, okay let's try c5 and b5 I like the system it's not supposed to be very good, but I don't know exactly why. And um, and while I'm figuring that out, I thought, why not try it in Blitz? So yeah, now we get a get a banker gambit, which I'm fine with. I don't know what uh, the accurate way is to play here. Haven't really. Played the get Benko a lot for, for many years. Feeling like a5 shouldn't be too bad, but maybe the experts are are laughing at me. So redirecting stuff to the to the queen side, then knight c7 is coming next, and hopefully after that I will be be ready with either f5 or, or e6. Feels like I should insert rook b8 while I can. Is bishop a6 good? Takes, takes. Yeah, why not? If knight c b5, I would have gone knight c7 back and he wouldn't have had his blockade. Now that I actually put his put my knight on uh, on uh, b4, then he will have knight b5 later. But I'm I'm counting on counting on f5 to be uh, to be good here. Maybe it's nothing special. Knight p5, that was expected. Maybe I can try and double rooks. Doesn't look too bad. I still haven't decided whether I'm going to go f4 or eventually take e4. Also have ideas of, um, of e e6 here. Yeah, so he's going to to c4, which tells me that I should take action and go for e6. And go for e6 now. He takes e6, which is very natural, and queen c4. Okay, going to try and play dynamically. For once, queen c5 is gonna is gonna happen. Then I go f e and um, hopefully my my play in the center will be will be quite strong. It does feel like my my pieces are better coordinated than his. Uh, which should give me an advantage in this complications. And um, yeah, f4 just doesn't look very good. Now I can go knight d3. Um, and, uh, and if I get d4, she's gonna get steamrolled. So, um, now I have a pleasant choice, let's but let's take the pawn. And exchange the bishops with a little trick. Uh, 
And a couple of pairs of rooks while we're at it to get an easily winning ending. Or is it so easy? Maybe I just messed up. He has knight c3 now. Huh, that was dumb. Okay, I just got knight c5 and he still has a little bit of hope. Can I go king e6? I don't know. Yeah, it's a little strange when you know we were, you're going to win on time anyway, so you don't really focus that more, much on the quality of the moves. But okay, good game. That was a good fight. Um, let's see, who do we have? Did we have a grandmaster? I'm feeling uh, Adam, 2001 Rus. Okay, I just have to um, unfreeze the, the frame. And there we go. So this is, uh, ah, I think I know, yeah, Adam Akobian, he's a good player. Okay. Let's go. This is pre-moving everything. That's nasty. Oh, this line. This is tricky. I don't really know what to do here. Queen C2, I suppose. Rook D1, maybe. This looks natural. Trying to to discourage e5. Now c dc I'm not gonna take back. I'm gonna go bishop a3. And if cd cd it feels like feels like I have huge compensation. Yeah, so this is uh, it's clearly the better option. But now I'm getting some activity, I feel. Okay, let's just go play it the classical way. Not G5. Feels like I should be better here. I don't. I think Fe was um, was a bit overzealous. He should have uh, thought thought a bit longer there. Since now he's investing twenty seconds plus, but it's a little late because his position is already very dubious. Maybe there was something better, but this looked very clean. Uh, maybe like queen b3 and then I don't even have to take on take on f6 because he cannot avoid the fork but there's no particular reason to to delay it so just gonna and yeah I haven't won any material but my positional advantage is uh, is overwhelming So after knight a5, I'm going to go queen b4, avoiding the trick, knight a5, queen d5, rook d8. When I table, when the tables are kind of turned, I have to go queen f3, order not to lose material. But he really doesn't have a convenient way to defend b7, seeing as uh, rook b8, uh, bishop d6 was losing. Hmm, that's creative. Yeah, it was a that was a creative defense. Now I still want a pawn, but not under as good circumstances as I would have liked.
Yeah, this kid is fighting well. Yeah. Now it's become a bit of a race, which is never really what you uh, what you dream of, but feels like I'm way ahead. At least the way he played it. Now I always have uh, tempo with. Uh, Bishop c5 attacking a7 and yeah, this just doesn't work at all. Okay, uh, she wants a rematch. Uh, would have been interesting, but I, I think I gotta gotta try some other people. Okay, let's um, give people what they want what I think they want. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lawrence has been texting me nonstop the last uh, the last days wishing for uh, wishing for a game so I gotta give it to him. And uh, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get the he's gonna get knight f six on the next move. There's no there's no doubt about that. So we're living dangerously, but he's such a chicken. I mean, how do you not? He's gonna do the same. The. Yeah, the lack of uh, cojones is is astounding and uh, quite disappointing. But hopefully we'll get a we'll get an interesting game still. Um, once again, once White plays. Um, plays ED, I have absolutely no problems, but neither does he for the moment. Um, D5 looks a bit counterintuitive to me. What if I just jump in now? He can sack a pawn with, uh, with bishop D4, but I do not particularly believe it. I can just go knight B2 and and ask him uh, what you got. And I think the answer will be not very much. Um, and so he should he should make a shameful retreat with um, bishop to c1. But um, um, yeah, now I can go play e6. And it, although the position will be symmetrical, feels like I'm. Um, I'm way ahead in, in development and uh, my pieces are more active. So I should just be just be uh, markedly better. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, but who knows. Yeah, queen d3 I don't like very much. If knight d5 now I go bishop f5. It doesn't have a proper square for... Uh, yeah, so he has to go queen d5. Uh, no, I, I guess I can just go bishop e6. Mm. And um, yeah, if he takes on, on d8, I'm very happy. Just uh, maybe I should have taken with um, with the other rook, seeing that after um, after something, then knight b3, a b3, knight d2, or something, then. Uh, a7 will be hanging, but he very kindly played rook b1, which means that it's it's not hanging. So and then rook d1 just <laughs> loses a pawn, and 
it doesn't doesn't look like the game is going to be too interesting. So he wants um, he wants bishop b3, rook b4, but I think I can go c5 first. And um, yeah, it's starting to look pretty painful. Rook a4, but but yeah, this is just pitiful. Rook a3 to protect the pawn, I go rook d8 back. And, and uh, rook d2 is coming. Knight e4, I have rook to e2. Yeah, now this was a pitiful effort by, by Lawrence. Almost as bad as uh, as losing uh, four games with um, with Rook odds. And um, you never thought he'd uh, top that, but if there's one man who can do it, it's, it's Lawrence Trent. Just resign. Don't, don't sit there and... Um, and prevent me from uh, from playing other people who also want to play. Uh, yeah, he heard me. <laughs> okay, let's get another one. Um, so let's see who have we got. There's so many coming in. Um, okay. Okay, let's go with this one. This is Jake F from uh, from France. Doesn't sound like a very French name to me, but maybe it's Laurent's brother, Jake Fessinet. And he does play the French, which I like. You have to be consistent. Okay, let's try an old uh, Steinitzian system. Or maybe Nimsovician. I don't know. Is this system Steinitz or Nimsovich? Maybe our readers or our listeners, our viewers can... Uh, can give some help, some insight to this, to this question. Maybe, uh, I think it's probably Nimsovich. Steinitz was more, was more about uh, this system in 3 knight c3, knight of 6, e5, knight d7. He would go f4, I think, and then c5, d c, queen c5, and then queen g4, queen h5. a5 is a nice, nice prophylactical move. After knight d4, d2, his intention is to go, is to go a4. Um, um, and then I cannot play knight b3 so easily. So that was a good plan. Um, and seeing as people are playing the system against the Karakhan with um, with uh, where they go c5 after after three three e5, uh, it stands to reason that this line isn't particularly good for white, objectively speaking. Um, but I guess it's still half playable. I could take back the pawn on on um, on on uh, d4, but I don't want to do that yet. So the attentive uh, listener will know that I used a similar plan in an in an earlier game today with um, with h4 um, in uh, in a French 
in a in a French structure. So it's the same here. Rook a7, I failed to uh, to comprehend properly. Now I feel like he has to go h5 and queen h3, but my queen is temporarily out of play, but I don't think that bothers me too much. Yeah, now it feels like it's time to uh, time to take the pawn now that he's, um, he's misplaced so many pieces. And when he has misplaced pieces, it's no surprise that the tactics work for me. This is a little double attack, threatening the rook on a7 and also the fork on, on c7. And uh, suddenly winning an exchange and, um, and the game. Uh, yeah, let's go rook b1. Activating that rook. It's, it's hard to see exactly where his counterplay is going to come from. Bishop c5, I can go, I could have gone, let's say, bishop e3, d4, bishop f4 or something. And knight a5, I, I don't think it's very good since I'm getting some some central squares and now the, the other knight is coming to b5 as well. The bishop may come to b6. And uh, now his his king is gonna is gonna hurt. I think it's uh did I miss something? It's a bit surprising to me that there's no immediate knockout here. I guess I can just double rooks on on the d file since he cannot go knight g6 because of knight e6. Um, or maybe he actually can. Oh, I completely missed knight d7. Huh. Well, I've officially messed this up. It's become a. Uh, it's become an interesting game. I mean, what am I doing? Queen e6, he goes. Wow, queen e6, he goes queen e5. Oh, this is this is awful. Not at least knight b6. I have queen e6. Well, I'm going to win on time, but it became a lot more interesting than it should have. Okay, good game, Jake Fresnel. Oof, that was... Okay, what have we got? Yeah, I'm sorry, I cannot accept one minute challenges it's pretty hard to to say anything to give any reasonable comments then Thanasis Sertadakis I feel like I should know who that is I don't really though okay let's try the Karukan And this was one suggested me to me by one of my my friends who had read a leaflet on the Karakan many many years ago. Basically, the the leaflet told you to play Queen C7 in this line, and also to play um, uh, to play Knight H6 after 3e5 and that became my portrait for for about 10 seconds i think his c3 move wasn't the most incisive and uh now i've kind of um gained the tempo on on normal lines because he's gonna have to uh he's gonna have to go c4 anyway so 
C5 is, uh, sorry, C3 is clearly a, a waste of tempo. On the other hand, it doesn't mean, maybe it doesn't mean much. Maybe he'll still get C4 and his little clamp. So maybe I'm just full of shit. Who knows? What can I do? Queen C6 looks a little artificial. I'm gonna do it anyways, just for to shake the game up a bit. I'm hoping for DC Bishop C5, and then no DC I go Queen C5. Sorry, uh, but I'm hoping for Queen E4 at some points. Maybe I go Bishop C5 because I was thinking Knight E5 Queen E4 should be good for me, but. Um, he goes rookie one instead, and then I might just be losing time. I don't know why I played the Karakan. It doesn't suit my. Uh, doesn't actually suit my my temperament. I uh, like more active play. I'm just gonna turn on some more. Helped a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so we went knight e5. Which I suppose isn't bad either. What am I supposed to do now? Queen e4 looks a, a bit too dull. Probably gonna be dull, no matter what I do. Okay. Didn't want to exchange with um, um, you know, with uh, with Queen E4. I think I, what I just did may have been really bad, but he may not have found uh, the best way to exploit it, but still he's doing well, because he's going to get queen g4 afterwards. Oh, I'm short of time. Okay, then I just have to play. I don't think this is very good, but I have to go for it. Queen g4, knight d6, and hope for the best. Then I take on C4 and we'll see what happens. I guess I have a draw if I want, but I don't particularly want that. Guess the people want to see a time scramble. Scramble anyway. Okay. Can take on g2, so I shouldn't be worse, but I ah, can take and take on a7. He didn't do that, and now I should be better at least. Oh. What am I doing? Just have to go back. Just have to make sure I get a position that's easy to play. Okay. Tough game, really tough game. Once again, goes to show that uh, the Karakan is not for me, but he played well. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, 
try a, um, a five minute game now because I'm getting getting so worn out from all of these time scrambles or at least the one time scramble what should I do okay, let's try the let's try the Scandinavian This is a really dumb line though. Why does he exchange queens? Doesn't he know that I'm supposed to be the greatest endgame player of all time? Uh, that was supposed to be, um, I don't know. I guess it's funny because it's true, right? I'm not, not that high on myself. I am, but I usually don't admit it publicly. Um, anyway, this is this is a queenless middle game, not a uh, an end game end game yet. So, and there are a lot of tactics. Let's say if you had gone, if you had gone bishop c6 there, it could have been very interesting. Bishop c6, bishop c6, knight e5, bishop g2, rook g1, bishop h3, um, knight b5, and uh, who knows what's going on. Um, now I have a comfortable position. Don't think I'm better, but it's always, uh, always nice to to be the side that's that's pushing with with black maybe this was a bit too ambitious but then again why not he's played pretty passively so far so there's no reason why he should uh, he should feel the uh, the urgency yet um, yeah, this 94 move I'm kind of happy to see. Uh, since, uh, uh, yeah, bishop c5 is not gonna happen because of bishop e4. And, um, with the knight always being a bit unstable on e4, d4 is not an, uh, it's not an issue. Yeah, knight c5. That's a good move. I suppose I have to take it. Should I go bishop f3 or should I not? I'm gonna go knight e6. If he wants to go knight e1, that's fine by me. That knight is is not gonna have any prospects for a while. I'm gonna go knight f5, then push h4, h5, h4, and I'll be very comfortable. Maybe he can go knight d2. That I didn't consider. Bishop g2, rook g1, no tactics. Yeah, good move. Shouldn't have allowed that. So should no, he's he's quite fine. Very slightly better, but it's mostly mostly a theory theoretical rather than uh, than practical edge because yeah in practice it should be should be fairly dry i will still win the game though seeing as i am as earlier noted the greatest endgame player of all time according to some uh but it's not gonna be easy a5 feels feels useful not to have that that one getting getting fixed s3 f3 is good he's making all the right moves he's clearly a very very solid positional player 
No, he probably should go King D2, hinting at uh, at Rook A1. And I don't know what I was saying earlier. I don't have an edge. Position is just equal. That was a poor move, though. Now we do have some pressure. Already threatening bishop e4 and fg4, then knight h4, and, and uh, yeah, f3 is hanging, and he's gonna lose a pawn. Rook h1, but that's still a fairly healthy extra pawn. That is a good move, actually. I'm not sure he realizes the point, but uh, it is a good move. I'll try and be tricky and go rook g8 first. I'm threatening bishop b4 followed by knight g5, so he should go bishop b3, after which I should take on, on e4 anyways, but I don't know. By, by delaying it, I was trying to to do something. Not quite sure what. Oh, I'm allowing bishop h6. Oof, but I have king e6, and then if rook g7, I have, um, yeah, rook h8. No, that doesn't work. Maybe it does. I don't know. Yeah, the only worrying thing is if king e6, he may have um, c3. My knight is getting dangerously short of uh, short of space. So. Guess I should bring it back, but this wasn't very smooth technique, that's for sure. What am I doing? Nobody ever taught me to put the to rook behind the pass pawn. Let's go. And now time has run out, but the position is also hopeless, so Okay. Let me see. Uh, who have we got? Okay, gonna try. Somebody from uh, from Uruguay. Black Dog Thirty. D four this time. You gotta show up. Ah, I have an opponent. That's good. Bishop f4, London system, has won me many a many a nice game. And hopefully. Good thing about it is that you sometimes you can win model games with it. So I will try to make that happen. That will be my my goal for for this particular game. Let's see how much he uh, he knows about this stuff. Okay, I don't know if his plan is bishop a six. Um, I'm going to go knight e5. It's not a great move in case he goes bishop d b7, which he did. So that was a bit of a bummer. I was hoping for uh, bishop a6 because then I would just win a tempo. But now I have to do this, which is really not a good line, but 
What can I do? So the point is of my previous move is that he had a positional threat of going uh, knight uh, f5, then if after my bishop moves to f2, bishop e7, followed by knight d6, occupying the square in e4. And uh, queen b1 is an extremely ugly way of, of uh, preventing that, but it's uh, probably the, uh, the, only, the only reasonable way. So a5 is preparing bishop a5 and a bishop a exchange. Uh, but it's probably not quite concrete enough. Okay, I'm gonna try and play for the audience a bit with bishop g5. Now my plan is h4. It's probably not too great, but trying to uh, to play to the crowd for once. That's what you want, right? None of these boring endings, all the nonsense you've seen so far. Just pure brute force attack. I think knight e4 is a bit desperate. There was no there was no need, particular need for such for such measures. You can go f6 which doesn't win a piece um, because of knight g6, hg, queen e6, rook f7, h5, then after gh I can go bishop f h4. Uh, but even the win of a piece I don't think would have made him happy if actually he'd have, um, he'd have won it. So, um, so yeah, knight e4 wasn't very good. And, no, I'm uh, I'm a pawn up with uh, with a positional advantage to boot. Yeah, problem here is that I really want to go long castles because Hg Hg wins, but he has Bishop G5 Hg and Queen G5, and I cannot cannot allow myself to play. That primitively for tricks, so I'm just gonna keep it simple and uh, try and try and mate him in a more precise way. Rook is coming to g3 and uh, yeah, f5 felt kind of forced at some point, but. Now he's losing a second pawn and uh, and the game. And that's it. Two pawns up. One more. Two pawns up in the rook ending, and um, the game should be in the bag. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna try and fix my connection till next time. Sorry, folks. I don't know what's wrong. Uh, but something seems to go wrong every time. And when other people play Banter Blitz, it doesn't. So I'm the problem, and I have to figure out how to fix it. Okay, Tommy Man. It's a good player, 2,900 plus. Who is Tommy Man? Ah, Thomas Conan. He's a grandmaster. I was hoping uh, it was a fish with a high blitz rating, but no such luck. So I'm going to try and get... Uh, so-called, what do you call it, a Norwegian rat? Gonna try to get it, get it again. And I shall be very disappointed if I do not. And everybody does something else. What is it about this particular opening that is so scary? Tell me, people. Okay. Now, his setup makes some sense, I suppose. 
since uh, he does not do. Uh, um, yeah, after three bishop d3 in the pits, then usually black goes uh, goes e5, which is supposed to give good play. But here, this is not so not so simple um, with with this particular move order. So I can understand it, but. At the end of the day, why people aren't trying to refute this particular opening, I don't really, don't really get a hundred percent. E five, you can you can take if you want, but then rook e one is is really kind of pointless. And um, but yeah, if he wants a very safe game, that's what he what he should do. I once won a game from a very similar position against uh, the famous Norwegian Grandmaster who seems to be mentioned on every show, Jonu de Kammer. But that was a little bit different, I think. And in that game I played for for an attack with uh, knight h5 and so on. But this time I'm gonna... He's, he really wants me to play knight h5, which confuses me a bit. Then knight d2, knight f4, should be okay. But it's a bit dull, that's the problem. It's really dull. So I'll try something else. When he allows me to get this base, I'm gonna take it. I'm not sure it's very useful, but it looks really dumb to to go a5 and then not to go not to go a4. So there you have it. It's a good move. Guess I should take it. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about about this position. It's it's really dull, and uh, I'm not not at all better. He's probably, if anyone, the one who's who's slightly better. Maybe preparing. Rook a1 followed by rook a8, and also stepping out of any of any possible attacks. Yeah, I really feel like I haven't handled this well. <sighs> this exchange isn't great from a positional point of view, but uh, I'm hoping that with the help of some tactics, it might be might be good. Um, I'm not really sure why he's uh, he's aiming to uh, uh, to exchange that one. I feel like that should be a good exchange for me because now, I'm, okay, my bishop is not active, but it may become it may become a good bishop eventually, and at least it unbalances the game a bit, which should be should be okay for me. So I feel like the trend is not is not bad, and um, and that his his last couple of moves have been have been kind of poor. He's still fine, but not um, not even close to being better. Um, I'm the one who's uh, who's who's uh, who's who can claim to be slightly better now. So so the trend is good. C4. Yeah, I feel good about bishop e7. 
potentially gain ac access to, to some dark squares, hoping to dominate his knight a little bit. King G7, why not? Okay, Rook A1. Suppose his plan is Knight A1, but it doesn't look like a very good plan. This also looks really poor I'm completely dominating now not winning yet but but it's uh, it's not that far from it actually Queen c2, but now I go rook c3. If queen back, I have a couple of options. I can go rook c1, queen c1, queen d3, or I can just go queen d3 immediately. Mm. Okay, I guess I'll just go with that. Uh, this looks the cleanest, to be honest. Yeah, he's attacking e5, but queen e4 wins a pawn and, uh, and protects e5, so that cannot be too bad. And if knight e2, I can just take and go queen c4. Two pawns up in the queen ending should be, um, should be plain sailing. Now I'm threatening queen c4, and here his knight is getting dominated again, and it's really, he uh, really regretted the, the bishop exchange at the end since my, my previously um, inactive bishop became a, became a monster um, eventually. And, to be honest, I didn't do too much in this game. It was mostly self-inflicted damage on, on his part. He played a very solid opening, but um, he chose the wrong plan. And after that, I didn't, didn't have to do much. He just had to put the pieces on good squares and start collecting. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do uh, two more games, and then then I have to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do one five-minute game now. And um, and uh, then uh, we'll see if it will be a three or a, a five minute at the end. Okay, so let's try. Uh, I've tried so many nonsense opening with um, openings with uh, with black, especially the so called Norwegian rat. So let's try and play something strange with. Uh, with uh, white as well. Uh, yeah, so the idea is after EF I go queen f3. A typical idea in these black redeemer positions is um, fe queen knight e4 queen f3. That only works unfortunately when the bishop is on c1 and there's no mate on um, on uh, on D two, so now I have to go for something a bit more mundane. C six is no good. Now he's just giving me. He's just giving me an initi initiative for free. Okay, E five was stupid. I got a bit too excited there. Should just gone knight F three. 
Well, maybe this maybe this is not too bad. Maybe I'm being too harsh on myself. Wouldn't be the first time. Um, yeah, he's got a difficult choice here. F6 looks really ugly. Otherwise, knight b4, I can go ef. And then bishop f7, long castles. That looks extremely promising. And after fe, I think I just go either knight 3 or or long castles. And um, he has uh, serious problems with uh, with his development. And, um, and mine is going quite swimmingly. So... Should I include EF? That's the question. Ah, I don't want to. And uh, there's always a little trap that if he goes bishop c2 at some point, then um, then I have um, d3 trapping the trapping the bishop. Okay, so I guess long castles and um, a quick knight of three. And I should be doing pretty well. Pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, I'm thinking if long castles, queen e3 is really annoying for him. Um, since king b8 runs into into uh, bishop c4, queen f5, g4, winning a piece because of uh, queen g6, queen f4, check. And I suppose his best choice is probably queen c5, but that's really ugly. And uh, yeah, now he just walked into bishop c4, and uh, that's going to be, um, be the ball game right there. So that's the problem with playing the sort of opening that he played. Two bishop g4 is uh, is is uh, is an excellent move, but once I get f3, e4, the the stakes are uh, are raised immediately, and um, um, the character of the game changes, and it means that you can uh, you can once in a while lose lose quickly. Um, which is um, obviously never, never desirable. Um, so um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful. And now the the final point is rook f8. I have knight e5, so I don't lose a piece. And uh, I expect the game to be over. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a little, little late to start thinking now. Mr. Carlos Renuaba from Chile. This one. Yeah. Okay, he resigned. Okay, thanks for the game. And uh, last one. It's going to be the last one. Who have we got? Let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, let's get uh, a three minute game at the end. Melan Andre which was not surprisingly Andre Melan. Okay, final final game boys and girls. Let's let's make it a good one by playing a boring first move. 1c4. And uh, is he not here? Yeah, he's here. Why are people stalling on the first move? I don't get that. Knight as free. After e4, I was going to go 
not G1. Just so you people know. Ah. Why is he playing so boringly? I want a D4. And this is not a great line. But what can you do? I'm not sure bishop c5 is great. e3. I suppose it's fine, but I feel like I'm getting an easier game than I should in this particular line. So after d5, I have the have the choice whether I should go knight b3, which doesn't look great, knight c6, or something else. Yeah, so what he's doing is, is solid, but he's, it's just a little worse here. And the position is not massively pleasant. After d6, I'm going to go knight c6, then b3, bishop b2. And I have a slight structural edge. So I guess this makes sense. I'm going to go cd now. He should probably go knight d4. And then ed, bishop b4, but still bishop f3. Or bishop g5, I'm a bit better. Um, he's going to have some activity here, but I'm hoping that my, uh, at this point, fairly significant structural edge will be um, will be more important. Let's try it. So we're in the home stretch here, and uh, it's, uh, it's freezing time and time again. It's not the best timing, but... We're going to try and fix it next time, people. Sorry for the for the inconvenience and uh, not making uh, your viewer experience as, as smooth as it should be. Yeah. My Skype is clearly telling me that it's high time to quit. Okay, rook b8. I don't know, I feel like playing a bit concretely. I didn't like rook b1, maybe you could go with f5 or something. So I'm just going to do this. He can take a2, but then at least I get knight c5 and I have some fun. And after this I go knight c5 anyways. And he's just spending too much time. You gotta stop, stop thinking, folks. Stop thinking, start doing. Now knight a6 is a decisive fork. Because, I mean, if you if you challenge for a three-minute game, you got to play fast. Otherwise, it's just better for for both of us. If you play five minutes, I have more time to uh, to talk nonsense, and you have more time to, to think. Okay, good game, and uh, I guess that's the last one of the day. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for tuning in, for challenging me, and... Um, um, there's going to be more. Uh, this is not the, the last chance, so don't despair. Or if you do despair, please come back. Um, anyway, we're going we're gonna to have something coming up pretty soon. It's going to be announced. So, um, so stay tuned and, um, and um, see you later. And that was Magnus Carlsen, ladies and gentlemen, apologies for the 
technical issues. I hope you still enjoyed the show. I certainly enjoyed it. So much to learn from the guy. I'm gonna see if we can go into his list of games here to have a look around. <clears throat> but it seems tough to do. Magna so far winning every single game in Banter Blitz. I believe the next one is coming up very, very soon. He hinted at it. I think he said it's gonna be. I'm not sure if I can announce it, but it's gonna be within days that much, I can say. What I can tell you is that tomorrow we have a bit of an event if you are planning to play a somewhat weaker, less handsome, less well spoken Grandmaster, then you, you can, can join tomorrow's show where we will play 12 hours non stop. Yours truly and my two Dutch friends, Jans Mates and Luke van Veli, will be joining the action and will play from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. Other than that, Magnus Carlsen will be back soon. And if you can't wait to watch more Banter Blitz, there's plenty of shows on the Chess24 YouTube channel or on chess24.com itself. One of the greatest candidate masters of all time, Radio Jan, had a session last week and so on and so forth. Thanks for watching. Once again, apologies for the trouble. See you guys next time.